Welcome home, honey. Do you read now? At the beginning of the movie, Jason had a happy family, his wife beautiful and caring, looking at the future of the newborn child is full of expectations. But just when his wife was preparing dinner, masked bandits suddenly appeared. When Jason realized that something was wrong, his wife was already dying. The cunning bandits sprayed LSD and fled the scene with great arrogance. When Jason woke up, he found the murder weapon in his hand, and the police coincidentally surrounded the place. In this way Jason was treated as his wife's murderer and sentenced to 50 years in prison. On Christmas night, Jason was sent to a private prison. The prison is under 24-hour security, to prevent prisoners from escaping. The prison is built on the sea, there is only one route in and out, because in this prison, all are the most vicious felons, everyone's hands are covered with blood. This day Jason wanted to have a quiet breakfast, but someone wanted to find trouble, not only towards the dinner plate spit, but also insulted his wife. The other party did not know that they had messed with the wrong person this time. After the fight, Jason is brought before Julie, who controls the entire prison and is an uncompromising dictator. In order to turn the inmates into assets, he orchestrates flying car races. Death row inmates become drivers, driving modified race cars to kill each other. If someone can win five races in a row, they will be pardoned and leave the prison. The track is littered with high-definition cameras and the race is broadcast live for a global audience. In the previous race, a masked driver named Frank, with super strength won three races in a row. In the fourth race, Frank suffered a mechanical failure and was mercilessly targeted by his opponents. Although he won the race but died of serious injuries, Julie urgently blocked the news of Frank's death to avoid a drop in ratings. She desperately needs a strong prisoner to replace Frank and continue the competition. Jason is the perfect candidate for the job. Jason is initially reluctant, but Julie's offer is too good to refuse, and Jason will be pardoned as long as he wins the fifth match by pretending to be Frank. After the deal was struck, Jason came to the workshop in high spirits and met with the team coach and technician Fatty. The race car was ready, with a high-powered engine that could explode with a terrifying 850 horsepower. In order to avoid accidents, the car is also equipped with nitrogen acceleration, racing defense is also very strong, the front and side is 2 cm steel plate bulletproof glass, clear Chinese manufacturing, the rear is 15 cm thick solid armor. In addition to these, the car is also equipped with smoke bombs and even petrol bombs, and then with two multi-barrel Gatling machine guns, it can really be described as a very strong performance. From the coach's mouth, the flying car race is divided into three games, the first two games to kill as many opponents as possible, to ensure that they pass the finish line can be. Who can win the third game to be considered the real champion? Jason's main opponents are five people, respectively, Chinese-American Green, Jim, former professional racing driver Colt, and Jake. Julie, in order to live earnings, each race will be from the women's prison, the selection of hot beautiful inmates, to act as a racer's navigator. Jason's navigator, Keith, is even more powerful and has helped Frank many times to save the day. Facing Keith, Jason didn't want to hide his identity and took the initiative to remove his mask to start the race as the lights began to flash. The participants looked excited. The global live broadcast was also launched, with over 45 million people paying to watch. Jason took the lead with the floor gas, and the rest of the team quickly sprinted off. The pack started to rampage and Jason soon lost his position. Coming in fourth, Keith calmly commanded a shortcut to follow, and Jason hit the gas at the intersection to take the lead once again. The race came to the second lap and Julie ordered the sensors to be activated, triggering gunfire, smoke bombs and napalm and traps. Jason lacked experience in his first race and failed to activate the weapons and was caught by the enemy behind the car, firing wildly with Gatling machine guns. But the driver's skills were really poor, and in turn was found to be broken by Green, who was excited at this point. He was looking at Colt in front of him, who didn't want to be killed and rushed to escape from the steel spikes to launch a counterattack. Green was unable to dodge the instant flat tire, the car lost control and began to roll, 14K saw the right time to send a missile. The car was blown away and crashed straight to the ground. Green climbed out of the car and started to spit out the fragrance towards the camera, but the next second he was smashed into pieces. The last lap of the race, Jake equipped with a giant gatling, the power is really amazing, coupled with cold stalking. Jason's armor was in tatters. Jason asked Keith to unload the petrol bomb, using the passenger's ejector seat, and popped the petrol bomb high up, and the oil suddenly spurted to cover the whole car. Without waiting for Colt to react, Case had already thrown out the cigarette lighter and the car was instantly engulfed in flames. 
After a fierce struggle, Jason always occupies the first place, and thought he had won and stopped on the side of the road, eventually finishing sixth. The car also became a lot of holes, see the horror of the race, Jason clearly said not to participate. Julie was prepared for this and pulled out a photo of Jason's child and threatened him, so Jason had to compromise again. That night he came to the workshop in anger, he wanted to ask Jim for clarification, but he was prepared. Jason was caught unawares and tied around the neck, and Jim was unceremonious, swinging a big wrench to kill. But the next second, a sharp pain from behind, it turned out to be Fatty arrived in time. While the other party tormented Fatty, Jason picked up the steel block and began to counterattack. Jim whereas Jason's opponent, can only explain the truth of the murder of his wife. The company's main business is to provide a wide range of products and services to the market. Unfortunately, the prison guards suddenly appeared and electrocuted Jason to save Jim. The second race was held as scheduled, when everyone rushed out of the starting point. Jason, however, does not panic and drives into the abandoned workshop, where he threatens to eject Keith to force out a bigger conspiracy, which turns out that Keith has been undercover for Julie. Ordered to lurk around Jason to prevent Jason from winning the race, thus keeping him in prison and bringing Julie greater gains. In return, Julie will sign a decree to release Case. But now, Keith has no choice but to cooperate, no more worries. Jason turns on the nitrous acceleration to return to the track for the race, but he no longer goes for the first place. Instead, he set his sights on Jim, his wife's killer, and he turned his car around and fired on all cylinders. And Jim starts shooting wildly at each other until he presses past the shield to activate the smoke grenade. Jim was blocked from view by the smoke and dodged and crashed badly. Seeing that Pyride High was not killed by the crash, Jason immediately reversed his car and returned. Meanwhile, Julie, in order to make the race more exciting, sends out a big killer called the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought was equipped with heavy firepower and started pouring ammunition on the riders. A time of flames everywhere explosion 4, two drivers died under the shell, more exaggerated is, the Dreadnought is also equipped with replenishment device. Once the tires were punctured, there was no way to escape, and in the face of the bullfit cannon, the 14K could only die of hatred. The two of them are forced to overtake the car and press through the skeleton to activate the trap. In reality, they are ready to kill Jason. It is convenient to plant a bomb on Jason's racing car. Later that night, Jason reaches out to Jake with a super daring plan. The third race soon arrives and Julie is bottomless, so to speak, to stop Jason from winning. She controls the sensor system and allocates all the resources to Jake. With so much equipment, Jake pours crazy fire on Jason and sees the tail armor to be pierced. Jason took the risk to remove the shield but Jake's extreme reaction to avoid the impact, followed by Jake fired a series of rockets. The target is not Jason's car, but the prison wall to blow up the gap, the two began to break out of prison one after the other. It turns out that Jason and Jake have been acting, in order to paralyze Julie, Julie is furious to detonate the explosives. But never thought that the bomb had long been defused by the coach, Jason threw down the spare fuel tank and stopped the large number of pursuing police cars on the bridge. The helicopter in the sky but followed closely, Jason took the initiative to cover Jake, lured the helicopter to the pier, jumped off the car in the night. It turns out that Keith has already got a release order and will be safe and sound even if he is caught. With Keith's help, Jason and Jake managed to rendezvous, running away by train, on the other hand Julie learned six months later Jason and Jake showed up in Mexico and opened an auto repair shop. Keith also drove there shortly after, and Jason not only got his kids back, but also gained friends and a new love.